what's going on you guys it's your boy twx27 in the building and in a different room yeah me and edward are not roommates anymore i mean we're still hanging out like we're still friends obviously but i don't know i just just needed my own space anyway avengers in game yeah so uh i've seen the movie and i have to tell you that movie was great man that was by far one of the best MCU movies I've seen ever. All right, let me just give a quick talk through. And notes, this is a spoiler video, so major spoilers are coming. If you don't want any spoilers, leave the video. If you want to spoil it anyway, that's up to you. So the movie basically starts off with uh, Clint Barton, you know, Hawkeye. He's with his family, and uh, they're just having a good time, teaching his daughter how to do the bow and arrow. And he turns around, then turns back. Dust, whole family's gone. Oh my goodness, and oh, he must he must have been really upset. I mean, obviously he was, like, it's its his family. Then it goes to the Marvel intro, love the Marvel intro, by the way. Then you just see um, Stark and Nebula in the Guardian ship playing some sort of, like, paper football game, and they're just, like, having a, a weirdly good time. And uh, Tony Stark, he, like, puts a message on his helmet and is just, like, talking and just sending a message to Pepper if she ever somehow gets it. He then uh, falls asleep and this is beaming ray of light. And I'm just thinking, wait a minute, is that Captain Marvel? I see, I'm just like, oh, it is Captain Marvel. Then she uh, brings him back to the uh, Avengers base. They talk, blah, blah, blah. And um, they basically just ex talk about how to, you know, find Thanos and get the Infinity Gems. And obviously Tony can't go because he's in really bad shape. So before they go, Captain America, uh, he says this line, he's like, Let's go get this son of a bitch. But you know, I don't think I've ever heard him swear. I think he might have, but I feel like that's like a time I really properly heard him swear because, you know, back in Age of Ultron, when he was like, uh, language, and you hear him swear and you're like, <laughs> wow, all right. And they discover that he's on this planet. It's called Morag. Yeah, that's, that's what it was called. Captain America, uh, Black Widow, War Machine, Nebula, Thor, and Captain Marvel. All six of those guys go to Morag. Thanos just owns a farm there and is just chilling. Yeah, I see his face totally messed up and his arm and the gauntlet totally like effed up. Yeah, he's just cooking and then uh, Carol comes in, puts him in a chokehold, and then the others interrogate him to find the Infinity Stones. Little did they know that Thanos destroyed all of them. Yeah snapped his fingers and just decided to just destroy the stones. You know, I don't remember the reason exactly for him destroying the stones, but I think because maybe they were like making him, I think weaker or killing him, I, I don't know. Yeah, y'all get triggered, Thor gets triggered, cuts him around the head. Oh, and what he said, <laughs> I think um, like Cap asked a question, what did you do? And, or was it War Machine? I don't know, someone asked him a question. And uh, Thor, he's like, I went for the head, and I'm just like, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, because, you know, in Infinity War, Thanos was like, you should have gone for the head. And Thor went for the head, but sadly, going for the head did not bring everyone back, so, yeah. Five years later, uh, yeah, they've all, um, moved, moved on, I guess, until Ant-Man. Scott Lang comes back. If you've seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, you know he was trapped in the quantum realm. You know that he was stuck in the quantum realm. So, uh, I don't know if it was the rats that did it, or maybe the machine just came on on its own. Look, whatever happened, he got out. He just walks around, he's confused as heck as what's happened. He realizes that this is a possible... No, no, no. That this is a time jump. Then he sees the wall of people vanished, and he's just hoping that his daughter wasn't one of them. And she wasn't, she's actually alive, and is a teenager, and I was just like, whoa, she's grown. So uh, Scott, he then goes and finds the Avengers, tells them about the, uh, like, the quantum stuff and the mechanics, and uh, they find Stark, Stark says no, too risky, and they go to Banner, he's like, we'll try. And then uh, Stark comes back in his, uh, in his nice car, it was a nice car, and decides to help him out, because like, when they were with Hulk, the time travel wasn't going really well because it had Scott Lang changing ages. You saw him as an old man, as a kid, and as a baby. It was so funny. Oh, I remember a funny scene when he was just like, wait, I don't know if it was old me that pulled my pants or young me that pulled my pants. 
Either way, I put my hands. <laughs> uh, man, I love Scott Lang. Funny guy. I really liked Ant-Man in this movie. He had a, like a lot of funny moments, <laughs> like the scene with the taco and uh, Nebula say like, uh, "Caution, there's an idiot on the campus." I'm just like, "Oh, that's mean, gee." And uh, oh my god, when Scott Lang made the comment of like, "That's America's ass," still busy talking about Captain America's suit. I'm just like, "Oh my goodness." And then Cap later on says, "Man." That is America's ass, when he's basically fighting himself, but luckily he doesn't know that it's him. He thinks it's Loki, so, so that was good. Anyway, so Stark helps them out. They uh, fix up the uh, machine. Luckily they get Clint, who's uh, Ronin. He was uh, doing assassinations in Tokyo. It's basically just fighting people and just killing people, you know, because he's got nothing to lose because his family's gone. Yeah, that, that was pretty sad. And he was just killing people and he's just, you know, full Ronin mode, yeah, he's Ronin. Black Widow talks to him, convinces him, and then uh, brings him to the uh, to the Avengers, no, not Tower, Avengers headquarters, and they all band together and go right through the park. Actually, I missed the part. Oh, <laughs> Thor. <laughs> Thor has really let himself go. Like, I just see this fat hobo, and then I realize it's Thor. I'm like, no. I laughed so hard, but at the same time, I was just like, this is so sad. Ugh, oh, poor Thor. I was surprised when I saw Valkyrie in the movie, because I saw her in Thor Ragnarok, and I haven't seen her since. So, um, yeah, I saw her here, and I also saw uh, Quog, you know, the rock guy. Yeah, so that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, they try and convince Thor, and he comes along. They all go through the quantum realm, and go way back in time. Oh my gosh, the time travel was crazy. They actually went to the time of the first Avengers movie in 2012 and uh, Thor and Rocket went to Thor's time in 2013 to get uh, like one of the gems as well. So the movie, like the time travel, it reminded me of Back to the Future. Well actually it reminded me of Back to the Future 2 because in Back to the Future 2 it shows uh, Marty McFly like trying to not make sure that his past, future, something self d doesn't like come in contact yeah, and it's the same situation for the Avengers. They make sure they don't, like, blow their cover or else, like, you know, space-time continuum rippage. Oh my gosh, like... Just movies with time travel, like, it really messes with your head. Okay, if time travel were to exist, and if you do time travel and do, like, one little thing, that can completely mess up the whole future. It may not mess up the entire future, but it'll definitely mess something up. Yeah, Thor meets his mom. Yeah, they have a moment, and uh, there was a point in the movie where uh, Stark and uh, and Steve went to, back to... Mm, crap. This was in the 1970s, I think, yeah. And they uh, see Howard Stark, and, uh, and I also saw Hank Pym, the young him with the CGI. Anyway, the Tesseract's there, Stark tries to get it, bumps into his dad. Luckily, his dad doesn't know who he is, so that's good, yeah. And they uh, have a moment as well. I swear, they got... So lucky doing the well, no, not all of them because you know, like Black Widow. Well, she's dead. Yeah, her and Hawkeye went to get the Soul Stone in Vormir, and she sacrificed herself. So uh, yeah, she's gone. Let's see. I actually never noticed how, like, like you know, the relationship between Black Widow and Clint Barton was, because I mean, I did see them have their moments where they would talk, but I didn't think that they were like that good of friends. They got all the stones, so that's good. Yep, they uh, snapped the finger, and um, seemed like everything was back to normal. But the problem was uh, the Thanos back in time in 2014. You know, like when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, he had discovered the plan through Nebula, like the Nebula with them, through the Nebula with her, I mean, him. Yeah, so uh, he finds out, and then uh, takes his whole army and heads to their time to get that gauntlet. I'm just like, oh boy. Just breaks the building, everyone's hurt, injured. Luckily, uh, Ant-Man comes and saves War Machine, Hulk, and Rocket. Thor, Steve, and Stark. Those three were going against Thanos, and I have to be honest, Thanos is actually pretty powerful, even without the Infinity Stones. I've actually never really seen him fight without the stones, so when I saw him fight without them, I was just like, oh man, this guy can really fight. Yeah, and they were fighting, fighting, boom, boom, boom. Oh my god, the most shocking thing. Cap 
held Thor's hammer. I'm just like, oh. Like, it was so crazy because I didn't, I, I, I did not expect that at all. I, I, the only other person I knew that could hold Thor's hammer other than Thor was Vision, but wow. I don't know, that was, that was just crazy. Yeah, they fight, 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 and Thanos broke Cap's shield. Yeah. And you have to break the shield, and it seems that he's still gonna fight. Well, obviously he still was gonna fight, but then Thanos brings out his whole army, and I'm just thinking, oh boy, he's not gonna survive. I know something, that there has to be an army that comes with him. And then, Doctor Strange whipping up the, whipping up the holes, and brings in Black Panther, Okoye, Siri, the rest of the Wakanda's uh, warriors. Then the rest of the Guardians are back, and Spider-Man. And uh, yeah, we also had uh, Valkyrie and the rest of the Asgardians, other like wizards, and uh, I think. But yeah, I also saw Wasp, yeah. I was happy to see Wasp. And also, uh, oh my god, I saw Pepper Potts in the uh, in an iron suit, and honestly, I've actually never seen her in an iron suit, so that was really cool. Yeah, it was nice to see Wong actually, like, doing something, because in Infinity War, he just left. He was just like, oh, you know, I have to protect the Sanctum. I was just like, shut up, just go fight. The Sanctum will be okay. So, uh, yeah, he did something. And then there's this, like, huge war. Oh, my God, Ant-Man. He got huge, and he was just, like, punching the ship, and everyone was just fighting. Oh, my God, it was so awesome, man. Like... I don't think you understand. I had serious goosebumps. I was just like, yes! I was just so excited. I was just like, this, like, this movie basically showed me everything I wanted to see. Like, I wanted to see all of them come together and just fight because honestly, I didn't want just, you know, the Avengers to take him down. Like, there has to, they all have to do this together. Like, come on, they're all in this together, man. And then Captain Marvel finally shows up, busts through Thanos' ships. And uh, yeah, it's in action. What was interesting to see was uh, the Ancient One. Yeah, I saw her in the uh, in Doctor Strange's movie, so it was interesting to see her again. Yeah, they all fight, taking down Thanos, the Black Order. Yeah, it was uh, interesting to see the Black Order back in action, because in Infinity War, they all got murked. Stark gets the gauntlet from Thanos when they're having like a bit of a rumble, snaps his fingers, and makes Thanos and the rest of his uh, of his army disappear. And when Thanos was disappearing, I was just like, "Bye bye, Thanos." Uh, that was so cheeky of me to say. Yeah, so um, Stark's dead. Yeah, the snap, like it disintegrated Thanos and his uh, army. That amount of power, it was all so much for him that he just gave out the life support thing that he had. Just went out like that. You know, like, I'm not even surprised because I, I kind of figured that he would die, but, like, when I saw the funeral and just everyone there, I was, I was just like, oh, man. And I have to be honest, I actually cried. It was just, like, a little tear. I was just like, Ugh. yeah. I mean, I, I liked Iron Man. Like, you know, he's a genius and he has a lot of charisma, kind of like me. Okay, yeah, that, that what I just said was not true at all. But I still like Iron Man, he's cool. Like, I literally couldn't hold it back. Like, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. And what did I do? I cried. And the funeral, like, it was nice to see, like, many people there. The Guardians were there. The rest of the, well, part of the Avengers were there, because, you know, Black Widow, Iron Man, gone. I also saw this kid. I saw him in one of the Iron Man movies. I forgot his name, but I saw him there. I also saw uh, Scott Lang, Hank Hope, and Janet there. And, uh... I also saw Carol Danvers and Nick Fury. Actually, many, many people were there, and it was nice to see. It really shows that people really care about this guy. Avengers Endgame, I give it a 9. Yeah, honestly, like, that was one of the best MCU, actually, one of the best Marvel movies I have ever seen. Like, Infinity War, Endgame, amazing. Just Purely amazing. The ending really interested me. Uh, Steve Rogers basically goes back in time. I mean, I guess it's okay because, you know, it is originally his time, but... Do you think, what was the real reason? Then I see Peggy Carr, I'm like, ah, okay, there we go, that's the reason. Yeah, sadly, there were, um, there were no end credits, so that was annoying. Like, I literally sat through, I think, three minutes of end credits for nothing. There was no mid-credits, there was no end-end credits. 
man, it, it just really shows that that's actually the end of the Avengers franchise. O obviously, there, there are more MCU movies coming, like Doctor Strange 2 is coming, Black Panther 2 is coming, Spider-Man Far From Home is coming, and uh, a possible Guardians 3 since James Gunn is back, so that's good. Yeah, so uh, that was annoying. But overall, a good movie. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't see uh, Phil Coulson. Like, I know he's like supposed to be dead in the franchise, but to be honest, there are other people in this universe that are supposed to be dead. I heard that Catherine Langford was gonna be in this movie. Like, I didn't see her at all. I, I don't know if I missed her or maybe she has an uncredited role. I'm just like, wow, all right. To be honest, I don't really care that much because, you know, like I'm focusing on them. I thought maybe she might have been an important character, but from the looks of the movie, I don't think she was even needed. And honestly, I think we have to like, in a way, thank Ant-Man for all this because if he hadn't like talked to them about the whole thing, like this wouldn't have happened. I mean, obviously Stark is the one that actually saved like the universe, but this all wouldn't have happened if like, you know, Scott Lang didn't show up. So yeah, I have to say I'm a tad bit confused of something because I don't know if Thor is going to join the Guardians of the Galaxy or maybe just like see them once in a while. From the looks of it, it looks like he's joining their crew. So uh, yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be interesting. That should be really funny and great for him to be uh, in their group because, I don't know, it'll just be interesting. Gamora's like kind of back, but it's not the Gamora we know. Well, actually it is the Gamora we know, it's just the back in time one that never joined the Guardians. So. Uh, is she still gonna join them or is she just gonna be aloof? It looks like Nebula is like with the Guardians permanently and Gamora is just aloof. I don't know, I'll, I'll just see what MCU has to do about that. Uh, it was so funny and sad when Star-Lord saw Gamora and Gamora just looks at him like, who the heck are you? Like, you know, because this is before like they met each other. Like, so she had no idea who he was. Oh man, how she just kicked him right in the balls and just hit him down, just like, ooh, talk about brutal. See, I was just thinking to myself, like, you know, when Captain Marvel saved Tony Stark, I was just thinking, nah, maybe she's just like, you know, going around the universe and just saving people. But then I remember in the Captain Marvel end credits, she actually does meet up with the Avengers. She asks, uh, you know, where's Nick Fury? And then she, and then the others are probably like, oh, forget Fury, we gotta find Stark. I don't know, it's probably like a long conversation and then she just agrees to get him back. When the Hulk put on the, uh, the gauntlet and snapped his fingers, like, he really couldn't take the power, like, he was just like in agony, in pain. But Stark, he puts on the, the gems and he's just like, nah, no biggie, I am Iron Man just snaps the fingers, like, that, that's incredible. But then afterwards, he gets, like, a really bad burn on parts of his skin, so, uh, yeah, ouch. Anyway, that is my review for the Avengers Endgame movie. Uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, and please be sure to stay tuned for my Spider-Man Far From Home movie review that I will be reviewing over the summertime, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, and, uh, have a good day. Peace out. One thing I really did not understand about, like, you know, when they were time traveling was when Banner was talking with the Ancient One, and she basically explains if you mess up with uh, this point of time, this just creates a different time stream, and I'm just like, what? How does that make sense? You see, my brain, it's like so messed up because none of this time stuff makes sense. It, it, it really doesn't. But, you know, I just don't accept it because, let's be honest, nothing in the MCU makes sense so you just learn to accept that what i found really stupid was when nebula she basically shot her past self and i mean isn't she supposed to be dead or is it again with the time oh my goodness again with the time travel thing just being stupid it's messing with my head oh my god i almost forgot stan lee's cameo Oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention this. So uh, Steve and Tony go back in the 1970s. It starts off like showing a car and the back of it, it said enough said. And uh, then you see Stan Lee. Like, okay, like this is my first reaction. Like when I saw that guy, I was like, who the heck is that? I realized, oh crap, it's Stan Lee. Like it, it showed the younger version of himself. Like that's actually what he looked like in the 1970s. So 
that, that was really interesting to see. I don't know if it was makeup they did or they probably CGI'd his face as well, kind of like what they did with Hank Pym. But whatever they did, it looked amazing. <laughs> Rest in peace, Stanley. One of the biggest surprises for me in that film was uh, when I saw that Tony had a daughter. I was like, oh. All right. I guess it didn't really surprise me that much, you know, it's like, you know, in five years, you know, like, he probably like, you know, did some stuff in five years, if you know what I mean. Okay, shall I stop? Keep, 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 keep it PG. Anyway, he has some nice moments with his daughter and uh, the phrase, I love you 3000. I like that. That was, uh, that was nice. That was really nice. Now that I think about it, I think Rocket, like, this is in the beginning of the movie, also went with the six other guys to go fight Thanos, so yeah, yeah, I think Rocket was with them. Oh, I remember a funny scene with Korg when, uh, this is basically when Hulk went to find, uh, Thor. <laughs> Korg, he was basically like, oh, what's up chaps, come in, feel free to log into the Wi-Fi. And then I see him just play Fortnite, <laughs> and against this gamer, Noob Master 7, I think. Something noob, oh my gosh, it was just so... That was ridiculous. Oh no, the cringe. Oh, I remember this cringy moments that I saw in the film. It's basically when uh, they uh, meet Hulk, you know, in the um, in a cafe. Like Banner and Hulk are practically one person now. He takes a picture with these kids and then they walk away and then he just does a dab. I'm just like, oh no, no, cringe, cringe. Oh my gosh, they showed Fortnite. They showed the dab. Oh, just. Oh man, it was just cringe. It was just cringe unlimited. What was funny was when uh, Ant-Man asked for a photo. Like he was just like, um, you want a photo with me? Um, I'm, I'm Ant-Man. Then he just looked at him like, no. Like <laughs> they don't know who he is. And then the Hulk tries to help him out, but Ant-Man, he's just like, take the goddamn phone. Oh my goodness, this movie. It had funny moments, it had sad moments, and it just had cringy moments. Oh man.